Okay, come on in everybody, get yourself settled. We'll start in just a couple of minutes. Okay, well, it is the top of the hour, and I think we might get a few more participants coming in, but let's get started. Um, and then we've got about an hour together, so I'm really looking forward to chatting with you today. So, um, welcome, everybody. I'm Dr. Deirdre Pickerel, and I am the Dean of Student, of student Success at York University and Toronto, and Toronto Film School. And I am pleased to welcome you to today's session, So Much To Do, So Little Time, where we'll talk about tips and strategies to improve our time management skills. As we begin, we acknowledge that the land Yorkville University operates on in British Columbia, where I am located, is the traditional and unceded territories of the Coast Salish peoples of the Kakite and Kwikwetlem First Nations. We do this to reaffirm our commitment and responsibility in improving relationships between nations and to improving our own understanding of local Indigenous peoples and their cultures. Today in our session, I'm going to be engaging with all of you using an interactive presentation software called Mentimeter. Uh, if you've been to one of our sessions before, you'll be very familiar with this. We use it a lot. So you'll need to open an internet browser. You can use your computer, your tablet, your mobile device, doesn't really matter. You need to go to www.menti.com, that's M-E-N-T-I.com, and the code is 95680791, and don't worry about um, having to memorize that. It will appear on every screen that we're using Menti, and I'm actually going to pop it in the chat for you. So uh, let me find my chat, and I will put it in there for all of you. I can find my button. There we go. So um, that's, of course, if you're joining me on Zoom, you can use the chat and the Q&A panel as well. But keep in mind, I'm running solo today, so we'll do my best to engage you there and monitor the chat and the Q&A. But um, the presentation is going to get my full focus, obviously, until the end where we should have time for questions. Of course, if you're joining us live on YouTube, then I'd encourage you to join on, in our mentee as well, because you're more than welcome to participate there. And of course, if you're viewing the recording, then you'll have to catch us next time around in terms of our um, kind of engaging in the moment. So let's, let's get started. Now, I'm working off of two screens, so every once in a while you might see me shift, and that's just because I've got two screens going so that I can make sure I can see your chat. So what are we going to talk about today? We're going to talk about understanding time. Like, what are we talking about when we talk about time, man time and time management? We're going to identify some strategies that have proven to be successful um, for a whole host of people, and hopefully some of you on the call will tell us whether they're working for you and if you're using them. And we're going to talk about establishing new habits. So what can we take from what we're learning today and actually make it a habit so that we can improve our time management skills overall? So let's engage with Menti. So again, you can, should be able to see it on the top of your screen, but it is in your chat. If you go to www.menti.com, 95680791, and I can already see you're participating. So that is great. So how well do you manage your time is our question. And we've got one person that says incredibly well, not even sure why I'm here, but we're glad that you're here with us. Um, mostly we're kind of in the pretty well, we're in the so-so range. Um, and then we've got a couple of participants that are saying, oh my God, I need serious help. So that's great. I can see the mentee numbers are climbing. So that's fantastic as well. So again, um, and you can keep your mentee window open. You can actually see the slides as we move along uh, together. So you can just continue to really watch and engage with mentee. And I think we're slowing. Oh, we've, we've got jumped from 39 to, to 45 suddenly. And I've got somebody in the chat. 
So somebody can't use the internet without leaving a meeting. Well, that's interesting. I can't help you there um, for that, but feel free to post it in the in the chat if you want to participate in the in the mentee. And I, again, I'll do my best to manage everybody. So for the most part, this is probably not a big surprise. We've got people that are. I think I'm doing okay, but uh, you know, it's time for me to have a, a, a little bit of reflection on how I'm going in terms of my time management. So <laughs> let's talk about time. What are we talking about when we talk about this notion of time? So you can see there's a quote on the screen. No matter who you are, what you do, where you live, you get 24 hours in a day and seven days a week. That's the amount of time that you have to do all of the things that you have to do. And so it's really interesting that some people seem to stretch that time. They get more out of that 24 hours than others. And it's not a secret. Like there's no magic thing that they're doing. They don't have magic control over time, but they've learned how to manage it well. They've become exceptional time managers. And part of this is that they make a conscious choice to manage their time. And this is really interesting because it takes time to manage time. And what I find is that so many of us, we, we don't manage our time well because it we're already overwhelmed. We're already fully consumed by everything that's going on. We're squeezing every, every second of every hour of every day. And to pause and say, let's get organized. Let's figure out what time management system I want to use. Let's make sure I'm using all of my tools effectively. That takes time that we don't feel that we have. And so it, there's this tension. So did you know, <laughs> this is why this is so important. At school, 87% of students achieve better grades. That's better grades if they manage their time wisely. And about 20 hours a week at minimum should be set aside for learning. And that will change depending on the number of courses that you're doing at a time. We'll have participants on the call that are doing one course at a time. So if you're one of um, my lovely MACP students, you're doing five, one course, but five weeks. And so it's incredibly compressed and you're incredibly busy for those five weeks, but then you do another course. If you're a VBA student, you might be do, doing two or three or four courses all at the same time. And so you've got to manage all of those courses. So the number of courses that you're in, whether you're in a graduate program, whether you're, you're in a Toronto film school program, um, you know, where you're, you're um, in a diploma program, you're going to have to spend a bit more time or maybe even a bit less time depends actually attending to your studies it's not just the specific time that you're showing up to class it's not just the specific uh, time that you're posting in your dqs it's all of the other learning time and you've got to find time in your life in order to do that so on the other side once we get to work it doesn't get any easier um about 44 minutes employees at work spend about 44 minutes every day on social media so this, in some cases, from an employer's perspective, this could be considered what's called time theft. But if you're at work and you're checking, you know, Twitter and you're posting on Instagram and you're seeing what people are doing on TikTok and all that sort of stuff, 44 minutes a day, actually, you know, that's almost an hour a day. And so some people will consider that time wasters. And I certainly think it is. But there's also some evidence that it's good to stop focus on a project and do something else. Ideally, we're switching to a different project. We're not switching to looking at Facebook. And the average UK employee spends two hours, 11 minutes every day procrastinating. And so we might have some people attending today that are, are, are very good at, pro, at pro, procrastinating. That's a big word this afternoon. So why is this so hard? Like, why do we all struggle um, with time management? So first of all, it tends to be unclear priorities. What is the most important thing that you've got to do in a day, in a week? How are you managing your priorities? What are your goals? So how do you figure out what to focus on, what to do first, what to do next, if you're not sure which is most important, if you're not sure what you should prioritize? Technology was supposed to be our savior. It was supposed to be the answer to all of our prayers. But really, from a time management perspective, we are always and forever being interrupted. It's buzzing, it's vibrating, it's beeping. I know the way I've got my phone set up, depending on the notification, it makes a different sound. 
So then my phone is constantly making all of these different sounds and it's vibrating and it's this, that, and the other. And it's these constant interruptions that we can't seem to get away from. We also, some of us, have a need to please. And uh, that can be a, a, a real challenge. Others will always make demands on your time. There will always be that, that phone call, that text, that somebody appearing at your, at your bedroom door, your office door, whatever it might be, with an ask. Can you please help me with X? And, you know, for those of us that are people pleasers or for those of you that, um, you know, really want to be helpful, it's really hard to say no. But anytime you say yes to something, something else has to, has to shift to make time for it. Things happen. Kids get sick. Cars break down. Computers break. Internet falters. Bosses call. Children's school calls. There's always going to be interruptions. And so there's always fires that we have to fight. And it's part of time management is really looking at proactively managing your time. But there's also going to need to have that space for the unexpected. And we're gonna talk a little bit later today about living our life to what, what, I, what we call to the margins, where you've got so, everything is so jam packed that the slightest thing goes wrong. You're 15 minutes late to something and, and you're, you know, everything collapses. So we're gonna talk about that a little bit. And then a lot of us just say, this should just be easier. Managing our time, managing our tasks, managing our priorities should just be easier. It should be second nature. And really, that's not true. That's absolutely a fallacy. We have to learn how to manage time. We have to manage and select systems that we know are going to work for us, that we can commit to. What your friend uses, what your colleagues use, what your co-learners use is not going to necessarily be a system that's going to work for you. And so you really have to invest some time and energy in order to figure out and learn how to manage your time better. And obviously we think coming tonight is gonna to be a good, a good first step and I certainly hope so. So <laughs> in amongst all of this, let's call this an important announcement. So this is Charlie Gilkey, he's an author. And um, so he has said, unless you're close to a scientific breakthrough that allows you to bend space time, you can't speed it up, slow it down, optimize it or maximize it. A second is a second. We kind of talked about that a few minutes ago. People who think they have time management problems really have priority management problems, which means at the root, they have self-management problems. So this is all about us. We can say it's about our bosses, it's about the demands of school, it's about the demands of kids, but really it's very, very much an internal problem. There are only, only so many priorities you can address in a given slice of time. So if you're trying to juggle too many things, and you don't know which is most important, so you're trying to do it all. You're setting, you're almost setting yourselves up for failure instead of setting yourself up for success. So it's so important that we really, before we can even tackle time management, how am I going to manage the time that I have? Really, you need to think about priority management and what is most important. So let's talk about identifying some strategies. And we've talked about time, 24 hours a day, that's all you got. And I don't know about you, but you know, you're gonna have to need really, the experts say seven to eight hours of sleep. So that's gone. So then you're, you're only dealing with, with what's left. Uh, so let's talk about some strategies. But first, I wanna hear from you. This is an open answer. Um, you can just type in with your keyboard and let me know what tools or strategies are you using right now to manage time. So you may have a task manager that you use. You may be using your phone, your Outlook calendar, and your to-do list. You might use Microsoft Planner. You might use, you know, all sorts of stuff. So let me hear from you in terms of what your, um, what systems, what strategies you're using now. Shared family calendars, time blocking, Trello boards, that's great. Somebody's not using anything. A list of tasks every morning, that's, that's a fantastic idea, absolutely. Um, I love all of you that are saying blocking off time. Somebody's posted in the Q&A, Asana. Great, we're seeing a lot of strategies. And we're seeing my screen pop in here. So somebody doesn't really use anything. Um, we, we have some questions. I'm gonna try to get to those in six. Old fashioned school paper day timer, love it. I'm a pencil paper person too. List reminders, to-do list. We've got somebody using Microsoft to-do. 
um, to-do lists written out, really working with lists, realistic goal setting. I'm so grateful whomever said realistic because that's so important. It has to be realistic. With lots of people that are using Outlook and Google Calendar, iCal, those sorts of things, Google Alerts, Calendar Alerts. So there's lots of strategies being shared here. Um, Outlook calendars are coming up. That's fantastic. Um, I love this good old fashioned day timer planner. I love it. Oh, and somebody's really got A10 priorities, B1 to 10. Love it. Whoa, somebody's really organized. Um, I love this. I don't use I don't use anything since I never manage my time. I just do things when they pop in my head. That that can work too, but I wonder how successful that is. Whiteboards, post-it notes, love post-it notes. Okay, so I want you to keep this in mind. I want you to keep in mind what strategies you are using. Because I've got another question for you. Let's see. How well are these strategies working? And let's see what you've got to say in terms of how well they're working. And I'm just going to check my Q&A in my chat. So we've got iPhone came up again. Um, somebody spending all their time on school, and so that's easier. So, so far, so good. Not well. Not very well, honestly. I appreciate the honesty. That's great. Mediocre. It's a bit daunting. Thank you, whoever posted that, because, yeah, this is quite daunting. Um, depends on the day. I love 94.3%. That's quite specific. That's, that's great. Um, they need tweaking, but it's a good start. Oh, yeah, here's one. Working effectively until COVID. And then COVID really has kind of sent globally. We're a little off kilter, aren't we? Um, calendar keeps me on track. I need to see what this one is saying, but I need help juggling it all. Yeah, so that might be a priority management thing. Um, I tend to do things right before they're due. Me too. So you, whoever said that, you might be pressure prompted. And pressure prompted people um, do their best work when there's a little bit of extra pressure or in some cases a lot of extra pressure. I'm like that. So I am often doing my most brilliant things at the last minute. So it adds a little bit of extra stress, but it's when I really get fired up. So there, there isn't necessarily a bad thing about that as long as you don't have so much on the go that when the pressure mounts, you actually can't get it all done. It's discipline is a big thing. Yeah, discipline is a big thing. Great, great. We've got some awesome things going. Um, perfect, okay. So let's talk about more strategy. So this is great, everybody. Oh, let's I'm just really trying to be conscious of time. Make sure we've got all the time that we need here. Find strategies that have worked quite well. Okay. So what are some time management strategies? And I think we've really seen these already in what's been shared in, um, in Menti, right? We've, we've seen a lot of strategies come up. So let's just check and make sure I'm not missing anything in my chat and whatnot. So obviously, a time management strategy is to select and keep an agenda, a calendar. So some form of calendar that allows you to put in all of the things that you have to do, all of the places that you have to be. So some of you are using day, um, like day timers, paper calendars. Uh, some of you are using wall calendars, we saw. Some of you are using electronic calendars, whether it's Outlook or Gmail or iCal. You know, there's a million of them. Um, some people might be using fancy agenda programs. You can see things that are beautifully artistic and they sync across all of your devices. So wherever you go, you can see your calendar and you can get all your reminders and those sorts of things. And some people might actually be using both. I'm in that category. I have my Outlook. I am an Outlook fan. So I have Outlook. All of my appointments are in Outlook. They're all color coded depending on what it is. And I can see that calendar and it syncs to my phone. So I get my reminders. But I actually also keep a paper calendar, which is double the work. Anything that goes in my Outlook calendar goes on my paper calendar. And the reason why I do that is because when I'm on the phone or checking email or in a meeting like this and somebody says, hey, Deirdre, can you meet next Tuesday? Rather than trying to figure out where my calendar is, I can actually look up my month at a glance on, on the piece of paper. So that's a strategy that works for me. 
but it is, um, it's not going to be for everybody. And so you have to kind of figure out what works. Um, some people are brilliant. Um, one of, one of my team, Linda is absolutely phenomenally brilliant at blocking out time and guarding it. But this is a critically important time management strategy. So if you've got schoolwork to do and you need to write a paper, it goes in your calendar and you actually guard that time. It doesn't become gardening time. It doesn't become, you know, um, we're gonna now go grocery shopping that day. It, it, it really has to be guarded. And if you're going to let it go and you're gonna let something infringe on that time, then you have to move it. You can't just erase it because you actually need that time to get your, your tasks done. Really, really good time managers block out time for everything, their sleep, their exercise, absolutely everything to make sure that they fit it all in. And that's a really cool strategy as well. I'm not quite like that, but that's a really cool strategy as well because it really makes sure that you are attending to some of those things that we can, we know are really important, like getting, getting some exercise, eating well, sleeping well, but we often don't put first. And yet we know that if we are exhausted and sleep deprived, nothing is going to go as well. So I really encourage you to think about what are you actually blocking out time for, especially for those that are such good time blockers that we saw on our strategies. What are you blocking out time for? And are you blocking out all of the time that you should block out? We've talked about this set clear goals and priorities for all your tasks. What can you set aside? What is, what is the most critically important thing that you've got to do in a day? We saw somebody share that they use A1 to 10, B1 to 10. We're going to talk about some of those things in just a second. So it's really getting clear on what your priorities are. So if, if you know that you absolutely cannot function, if you don't get eight hours of sleep a night, block out your eight hours. Technology goes off, school books go away, all of those sorts of things. If you know that you really need to have, you know, do a 20 minute yoga and mindfulness session every day, it's the only way you're going to get through, put it in your calendar and guard that time. So, it, you know, all of those sorts of things become really important. And with stuff like these, in terms of your priorities, it's really important to think it's been like for most of us over a year, probably since we've been on an airplane. But if you remember when the flight attendants are talking about the oxygen mask, they always tell you to put your mask on first before helping others. And it's the same with, with setting your priorities, setting your goals, and all of these things about managing your time. You really need to put your time first. Otherwise, the next thing you know, you know, the day is gone and you haven't eaten, you haven't exercised, you're exhausted, um, you feel terrible. And, and when that perpetuates, it causes stress, anxiety, it makes it much, much harder to get things done. Uh, clear out clutter physically and mentally. When you've got stuff hanging over, it really can be challenging. Now, interestingly, a little tidbit for you. As much as I said you should do, you know, figure out what's important to you and all of those sorts of things, and that is absolutely true, and I don't take that back. At the same time, an organization that I used to work with, um, we used to have ticky contests. Like literally we would have ticky contests because what happens if you've got all sorts of kind of small tasks that don't really take very much time, but they're not important enough to put first. When, when you start to have an accumulation of those, they take space in your brain of all of these things, these little tiny things that I have to do. I've got to mail things. For me, I've got to order thank you cards so that I can thank my Ask an Expert speakers. There's a whole bunch of little tiny tasks that won't take very long, but aren't important enough to make it to the top of my list. And they just kind of sit in the back of my brain and they take up really important real estate. And if you're anything like me, when they really come to the forefront is like two o'clock in the morning, right? Those are those little things that kind of nag at you. So sometimes it's good to take an hour or a half hour of time and say, I'm going to get rid of as many tasks as I can. And for those of you that are competitive, if you make it into a ticky contest, you know, whether it's with a partner or kids or just a contest with yourself, how many things can I actually get done of these small five minute tasks, 10 minutes tasks in an hour? You'd be amazed at how much you can breeze through. And then you've, you've cleared the, the clutter from your brain in order to help you focus on a whole bunch of other things. Don't overcommit. I'm the worst for this. Anytime somebody, because I really like new projects. 
So anytime somebody phones me and says, hey, Deirdre, can you do this? I'm all over it. I say yes. And I have to really, really be careful um, to not overcommit because I get so excited. There must be people on the on uh, in my my participant list here today that are like this, right? You get so excited about the opportunity to do something new that you say yes, and then you go, oh dear, I don't really have the time for that. So learn to say no. Know your prime peak times and plan accordingly. And I do see that somebody's asked about that. And then remember to enjoy every moment that you can. It really is important that you still smile and enjoy life. So know your pre, your your prime or your peak times and plan accordingly. You probably, so somebody's asked, how do you figure out your prime or peak time? You probably already know this. You probably already know this. So think about, if you can take a moment and pause it and reflect, think about when you have the most energy, when you're most able to accomplish some of those higher cognitive function tasks. So for some people, it'll be morning. Morning's their peak time. They get out of bed, that sort of stuff, and they hit the ground running, and they are just ready to go. They're energized. They've got all sorts of, of cognitive power. Um, and that's the time that they should be doing some of those really cogn that, that cognitively heavy work. For other people, they don't turn on until evening. So these are our night owls. It's not just people that stay up late binging Netflix. That's not what I'm talking about, right? I'm talking about people where literally they, are, they have more energy and they have more cognitive processing power later in the day. So you might actually already know this. Like, when do you feel like your brain is most active? Your brain is really able to process um, and absorb material. <clears throat> that will be your kind of your prime or your peak time. And that's where you want to block out time to do some of those more cognitively heavy things. Now, the challenge for a lot of us is our ability to schedule and block out that time isn't necessarily always when our peak time is. So for example, if your peak time is kind of, you know, kind of let's say nine or 10 a.m., that's when you really start to, because you've had breakfast and you, you know, you've dealt with kids to school and all those sorts of things. But if you're a student, a working student, and when you really would like to be doing your reading and your research projects and your writing, you're actually at work, that makes it really challenging because your peak time is being used at work when really, by the time you get home and have dealt with kids and all that sort of stuff, and it's you know six or seven o'clock at night and you're exhausted, but that's when you have time to do your schoolwork. That can become a real challenge. And that's where you know it might be handy to use your weekends effectively, can you negotiate different, maybe an opportunity to do schoolwork um, at work? You know, there might be all sorts of flexible options you might be able to do. Everybody seems to be, not, I shouldn't say everybody, lots of us are experiencing more flexible work hours and, and workspaces right now during COVID. So is there a way to really maximize that peak time, that time when you really feel that you are have prime energy and are, and are ready to go? It's not always easy. Not, um, not all of us have the ability to do the most cognitively heavy work. For lots of us, lots of you here, that might be school um, when, when it is your peak time. But if you can figure that out and try to plan accordingly, you might find some success there. Okay. Let's see. Now, move us along. There's a million time management tools. You could spend the rest of the night and afternoon, evening, wherever you happen to be in the world, uh, researching different time management tools. There's a ton of them out there and we've seen some shared today. So there's a, there's a couple for you on the screen. So first of all, this is the, one of them is the Eisenhower Matrix. You could do this every morning, um, you know, or weekly or whatever you might wanna do. And this, this is Dwight D. Eisenhower, I think the 44th president, something like that. Somebody might correct me, but in that span of, of the United States. So, and, and what the Eisenhower matrix does is it really gets you to do those things that are urgent and identify urgent, important, not urgent, important, um, not important, but urgent and not urgent and not important. So this is a way to help you prioritize and organize your tasks so you know where your energy and your time should be going. So obviously you can see that the stuff that is not important and not urgent, you gotta ask yourself, why is that even on my list? Why am I doing this? It's, if it's not important and it's not urgent, 
um, then try to get rid of it if you can. Because again, what I mentioned earlier is it's taking up space. It's mentally cluttering your life. And you might also actually be BFing it, bringing it forward every day. You're right. You're rewriting and rewriting and rewriting this task, but it's actually, it's not urgent and it's not important. So why is it there? Give yourself permission to just eliminate it and say, we're not going to do it. Um, quadrant um, three is that urgent, but not important. So it, it really needs to get done. But it's not, you know, if it, it's urgent, but it's not important. Is this something that you can delegate? If it's if it's not, it's urgent, but it's not important for you, then can you delegate it? Is there somebody that you can give it to? Is there somebody that you can um, pass it along to and again get it off your plate? <clears throat> urgent and important, obviously. You know that you're gonna you're gonna do that stuff now. It's urgent, it's important, everything has to be set aside to do it. Um, and so those are things that you really likely have to get done. You might have to get done that day. And urgent but important, um, not, excuse me, not urgent but important, those are those things that you're going to want to plan around. You're going to want to block time out saying, this is when I'm going to do it. But giving yourself enough lead time to make sure you get it done. Because there's always things that might need to pop in to um, quadrant one. And so, you, so this is, there's a little bit of negotiation that might happen. If you're an early starter, it's easier for you to plan. If you're pressure prompted, then it gets a little bit more challenging. Um, so that's one method. Doesn't work for everybody. Is a very famous system, but it may not be what you want to do. We've had several people today share time blocking. And this is an example, uh, an image that I got off the internet that um, shows what you would do with time blocking. And you can see what most people do, it's color coded. So there's meetings, oh my God, has anybody attended so many meetings, right? There's meetings, there's emails, there's work that you have to do, there's social media, you know, there's all of these sorts of things. You might wanna put in exercise and eating and all of those sorts of things. And it, we just kind of go back and forth. We'll have a meeting for a while and then we'll go back to that project and then there's gonna be another meeting. And then suddenly I've got 15 emails in my inbox and we just kind of, go around and it's almost like responding to the buzzing or the beeping or the banging or whatever sound you've got coming on on your reminders. People who time block create a schedule for themselves where they're only attending to a small number of things or one thing at a time. So you can see that's the right side of the calendar under that time blocking image. So you can see that somebody's blocked out from 8 a.m. until 11 a.m. That's when I'm going to create the client proposal. And that's the only thing I'm going to do in that time. I'm not responding to messages. I'm not attending a meeting while I'm doing that. I'm not also picking up kids from soccer or, you know, putting on lasagna or doing the laundry or whatever it else. I'm, I'm taking those few hours and I'm only going to do that and I'm going to get it accomplished. Then, they, you know, they've got an hour. This is when I'm going to respond to email. And then, you know, there's a little bit of there's a little bit of social media time there. I'm gonna have lunch, then I've got meetings, then I'm gonna do more email, and then I'm gonna prep for tomorrow. And that prep for tomorrow is a really important piece because that's also a really critical thing about time management is that prep. So at the end of the day, what did I accomplish? What am I gonna get done tomorrow? Whether you're using time blocking or an Eisenhower matrix or A1 to A10 and B1 to B10, whatever it might be, you're actually being very intentional about what you got done today and what you're going to get done tomorrow. But that takes time, doesn't it? So if by the end of your day, it's nicely at five o'clock in the image, but if it's now 11 and at night and you're exhausted, it's very, very hard to force yourself to take the time to plan the next day. So then it might be something that you want to do first thing in the morning. But that's that time blocking. Now, the one caution that I would have around time blocking is that there are some studies that show that we need to switch our brains off of something and onto something new every 20 to 30 minutes. This isn't necessarily when you're gonna go and um, you know check email or whatever, because you, you don't wanna be having only blocks of 20 minutes. But in that create client proposal, if this is somebody that I was working with, I would say within that time, every 20 minutes, you might wanna get up and have a stretch, go refill your water, stop staring at it, give your brain that time to relax and then come back to it. But in that time frame, that's the only project that you're doing that allows you to really focus in and avoid all of the, the, the interruptions. There's another system called personal Kanban. And this is really interesting because, and, and 
some people will in a personal Kanban will have more than the three columns. Traditionally, it's three columns, but some people add a whole host of other columns depending on how they want to use it. And there's pros and cons for that. So the the three columns, as you can see on the screen, is the things I have to do, the things I'm doing, and the things I've done. And the reason why you have things in the things I've done is so that you can celebrate your successes. It's like checking thing off or crossing something off on the to-do list. You want to see it. You want to recognize that that's what you've accomplished today. Now, often what we'll see with people in personal Kanban, especially if they're using Post-it notes, and I saw Post-it notes, somebody's, somebody on our call today is using Post-it notes, is because you can color code them, right? So you can say, you know, one thing is, is email, one thing is this proposal and this writing project, and I've got to read this article and whatever it might be, or you might section it by school, work, family, and you can see the things that you are moving. And over time, a pattern might emerge. Are you getting much more work done, like work, work if you're working, and much less school done during the week and vice versa? So you might be able to see a pattern. But that's that personal Kanban system is to do, doing and done. And that's how you would organize kind of all your tasks. OK, so those are just three examples of time management tools. And they're very, very popular time management tools. So they may work for you. Now, <laughs> let's debate. <laughs> Pencil or paper or computer or mobile apps. And we saw, if you think about that first mentee that we did right from the get-go, we had a huge range of people. Some are using, obviously, app systems, Google, Outlook, iCal, those sorts of things. Asana came up. And some people are using a good old-fashioned day timer. So let's talk about each of these. Um, Paper planners and systems, and there's a million of them. I'm seeing more and more paper planners advertised in the beauty of planners and, and those sorts of things advertised. Tends to be fewer distractions because it's, it's really just that paper planner. So all that you see is the planner that you open. There's nothing else going on for you when you're, when you're looking at your planner. So that tends to be fewer distractions. There is... Countless studies that show that when we hand write something, we, our brain, our retention improves. So you're more, and this goes for anything that you're doing, notes for school, for work, whatever it might be. When it's handwritten, we have improved retention. So there is lots of evidence that would tell us that if we write it down, we're more likely to remember it. Um, it's not going to be this, that way for everybody, but that's certainly what studies have, have, um, have shown. On the other hand, <laughs> oh, and there's no learning curve. There's no learning curve for pencil paper. Um, I would say there might be a small learning curve if you bought into a, a system and there's lots of systems, whether it's Covey's or um, the perfect notebook system. There's lots of systems where you might have to learn how to use them and, and to use them really effectively. But in, in the grand scheme of things, there's no huge learning curve when you're just using a, a pencil paper agenda. agenda. So on the other hand, there's computer or mobile apps, and there's a million of these too. The nice thing is that, well, I say nice, <laughs> it may not be nice for everybody. We are never deviceless. For the most part, we are always on our mobile, have a tablet on our computer. We're never without our phones. Again, I'm speaking in generalities, but I think we can all agree. We're, we're for the most part, we're never without our phones, which means that you've always got access to your to-do list, to your calendar. You've always got access to those things. And there's, there's something to be said about that. When you're out doing groceries, you're not necessarily carrying around your agenda. Now, you might be, but for a lot of us, we're not carrying around our pencil, notebooks, and agendas, and those sorts of things. So having the devices is handy to have. It's also handy that it syncs across multiple platforms. So if you have a phone and you've got a computer and maybe you've got a, a computer at work and then you've got a computer at home and you've got maybe a tablet, the fact that it doesn't matter what device you're on, you can check your to-do list in your calendar. That's pretty handy. You never ever have to say, let me check that and get back to you because you can see it right in your system there. Um, it's also easy to edit, add, delete, right? I'm a pencil 
and paper person. Um, so I love my pencils, which means I can erase things. I very rarely write in pen. It's just a personal preference. And so it's a little easier for me to erase, but it can get a little bit messy. But it te they tend to be easier to use. The challenge is, and I should have looked up, I should have, I should have looked this up for this stat for you today, but we underutilize technology in a major way. So when we have all of these systems, if we don't use them effectively, they then they are less effective. And that actually would go for our paper planners as well. If you're not using them to, you know, really in the in the way they, they are designed to be used, if we're not using for all the power that is at our fingertips, if you will, then it actually could result in um, what is supposed to make us more efficient becoming less efficient. Um, so somebody's just sharing here that they use a digital planner um, on GoodNotes. I haven't even heard of GoodNotes. That's how I'm going to have to check that out. Um, and it grows across all devices, but also physically writing it with the Apple Pencil on the iPad. So that that's interesting. I wonder, um, I haven't looked, but I wonder what studies are in terms of handwriting on a tablet and where the retention is, because it's mimicking that, um, you know, that tactile sensation of writing, but it's actually stored electronically. So there's lots of really amazing things people are doing around, around their technology. So from my perspective, well, let's see, I think I have a mentee for you. Let's go to our mentee first and then we'll come back to this. Let's talk about what's best. Paper planner systems, you see computer mobile apps or help me decide. I didn't give you, uh, those were the only options I gave you. So this is now a forced choice survey question. Okay, so some of you are very much in the paper planner. Nice. Look at that. Okay, here's the thing. There's no best. There's no right answer. Somebody's saying in the chat, I don't trust technology. <laughs> no kidding. That is, the, but that, that's actually true. If you've ever had, you know, this happened much, much before, you know, cloud storage, but you know, when you accidentally delete something and you can't get it back, like it really is gone. So there is a, when you really look at the research, it isn't about what system you choose. It's about whether you use the system you choose and that there's a there's a difference there you can spend and believe me I love planners I have had Covey's planner and this planner and that planner and notebooks and all sorts of stuff I love this stuff if you don't use it it doesn't matter it doesn't work so if you don't use you know if you're not if you have access to Microsoft to do for example and you don't really use it all that well, you only enter half your stuff in, that sort of, then it, you're not actually using it effectively. If you're not using you know, your notebook and your notebook system effectively, then it doesn't matter. So what I would suggest in terms of this, these are my poor people that are like, I'm, I'm desperate to know which I should use. Really what you need to do is choose and then use it. Learn how to use it and block out time to learn to use it effectively. And it's really, really important to remember that we often have task lists and calendars separate. But if you haven't looked at your task list and blocked out time in your calendar for when you're gonna get those done, then, then your two systems aren't working in synergy. They're actually working off, you know, against each other in a way. Because you, if you haven't blocked out some time to get the stuff done that you need to get done, then it's not going to get done. You're not going to have time because it's going to be filled in with other things. We have an amazing way as humans of filling in space, whether it's procrastination, whether it's checking social media, whether it's going to endless meetings or always saying yes to people because it feels like you're not really doing anything because you've actually forgotten about your to-do list or your to-do list only has, has half the things on it that it should. So let me just quickly check my thing. Um, paper planner for daily to-dos, iCal for recurring events with notifications. So that can make sense, right? If you're, if you, as long as you have a system 
of how you're going to use these things. But the key for me really is you have to commit to it. You have to own it. You have to give it all of your soul and your heart for a, a good period of time. If you buy a notebook or you start to migrate everything to say iCal and Todoist or one of those things, and you give it, you know, like, and in, you know, 48 hours, it isn't working for you and you move on to the next thing, you haven't given it enough effort. Remember that all of this takes time and it takes time to establish those new habits in terms of all of these pieces. So I thought this was really interesting and I wanted to share this with you before we move on to the next topic. Um, yeah, so somebody's saying this is the benefits of a digital solution. Um, enter tasks into to do list app and assign it a block of time. Brilliant. Who is that? Andre, you've totally got it. Seven days to form a habit, 21 days to break one. Absolutely. So this is interesting. This is brand new research that I found, um, HBR, Harvard Business Review. Remember, time management is a skill. So this is something, it's a skill that you have to develop. And remember, unless you are actually practicing the skill, it never becomes good. It's like practicing, it's like learning to play the piano, it's like learning to um, play a sport. You, you know, it takes time to be really good at it. And this is the same thing. You're not going to all of a sudden be miraculously and perfectly managing your time if you don't put the effort in. And putting the effort in takes time. So it's this vicious circle that we can get in. So according to HBR, there are three specific skills that lead to success around time management. The first one is awareness, thinking realistically about time and understanding that it is actually a limited resource. You don't have, you only got that 24 hours, less however much time you have to sleep, less however much time that you want to exercise, attend to personal things, attend to family and all of those sorts of things. So it is a limited resource. There, you can't magically make more of it. What is very interesting is that in Quite a long time ago now, I did, um, I co-authored some research on dual career couples, which is exactly as it sounds. And what we were finding was that parents, but mostly um, mums, this was, this research was quite a long time ago. Um, what they were doing in order to find time is that they were doing things after everybody went to bed. So they lived, they had their whole day and put everybody to bed, including their spouses or their partners, and then did laundry, made lunches, balanced checkbook, checks book, check books, boy, say that three times fast, at the end of the day. And what happened was they were actually becoming sleep deprived. So they were getting less and less sleep because they were trying to find more hours in the day. But what they, they weren't finding any more hours. They were just making more hours of awake time and less hours of sleep time. And then finding that they were sleep deprived. So that's awareness. Understand it's a limited resource. Arrangement, using time effectively, designing and organizing goals, plans, schedules, and tasks. Attending to this and, and arranging your days to in order to get all of the things done that you have to do. And then adaptation. And this is a really interesting one. And there's also a technique for this. It's monitoring your use of time while performing activities. So it's paying attention to how long does it actually take me to do X. So if you are a student, let's say in our MACP program, how long does it actually take you to do your DQs every week? How long does it actually take to prep, write them, all of those sorts of things? And you may find that you're underreporting this. You may have a guess, but if you actually tracked it, do you know how much time um, it's taking. That's a really important part of time management. And there's actually a technique that I'll show you in, in just a little bit or I'll refer you to. We don't have time to talk about it today, where you're really doing that, that assessment of how much time do things actually take. Once you start tracking your time and being very realistic about the amount of time that things are taking, then you're better able to plan it. What studies show is that we under report or we're, we are underestimating the amount of time th stuff truly takes, which means that we overall have less time. So let's see. Establishing new habits. Th this is, this is, you know, kind of psychology 101. Um, analyze your use of time. So I just talked about this and really get a sense of what's working and, and what isn't. 
So what is working in terms of, of how you're using your time, how you're managing your time and what isn't working? We did a little bit about that, uh, that in, in the mentee at the beginning. And then select a system, paper and pencil, electronic, some sort of combination and be really clear on what that combination looks like. There's been some, if you have access, have a look at the chat. There's been some people that have been sharing exactly what they do, what's electronic, what's paper, how they use it, select a system. Get everything inputted. If this is a new system for you, you are going to have to block out time to transfer everything into that new system. And that can take, yep, time. So really, you have to make an effort, a conscious effort and block out time to establish your new system. Get it all set up the way you want it and then commit, commit, commit. You have to give it the time to learn, to make sure that it's working for you, to adjust as necessary. Don't abandon it because it doesn't solve all your time management problems in the first couple of days. It's going to take much longer than that for you to find your rhythm and find all of the ways that you can adjust the system in order to make it work for you. Okay. So somebody's saying, is it possible to get a summary of the digital resources? Actually, yeah, there is. I can actually export the mentee. So that's a really great, great question. So I love this. Being able to cross things off my list is so rewarding. Absolutely. And that's that personal Kanban. Remember, they have that done column, like celebrate what you've managed to get done. Dealing with the problems. We've got 10 minutes left. I'm running out of time. Isn't that hilarious, right? So dealing with the problems. There are, there are lots of key problems to why we struggle with time management. But in, in today's world, these are some of the big ones. The first one, I've not coined this term. I can't tell you off the, off the top of my head who, who coined this term. It was a book from a long time ago. And that's the tyranny of the urgent. Everything is always urgent. All, you're, you're doing something. I'm guilty of this. I'll raise my hand. I'll, I'll own it. And an email pops in and I stop what I'm doing and I check the email. Go back to what I'm doing. Ping! Stop what I'm doing, right? Because it just feels there's always something that's urgent. Let me tell you, there will always be things that are urgent whether it's urgent for you or urgent for some, somebody else, but it is a problem when it comes to managing your time effectively. Busy is a badge of honor. We've, co we've come to a place in society where the busier you are or the busier you seem, somehow the more important you are um, the, and the more you get rewarded. I've done a lot of work in organizations working with managers about how to turn this off. And so, you know, we would have, for example, um, the president would, would send emails really late at night or early in the morning. And somehow there would be this unwritten pressure. It wasn't coming from the president. It was not coming from the president of answering the email. Whoever responded first to that email that was coming at midnight was somehow, wow, this person is so on the ball and so effective and so committed. Nonsense. That person should be sleeping. So we have to, in our system, stop rewarding this, this notion that we're so busy. We also live our lives with no white space. So for now, those of you on the call that are my paper people, remember the margins? The margins on the side of your page. What, what's happening in life is that we've booked every minute of every day. So when something does go wrong, when something suddenly happens that, it causes, that requires you to shift immediately, when there's an emergency, there's no white space. There's no place to take that project that you had set aside two hours today for and move it because every minute of every other day is booked. So you really have to figure out where is the white space in your life and it can't be your sleep. It can't be eating well, right? We have to attend to our selves worth first. So really think about, do you have white space? And I used to talk to this to students that were coming into grad school. If you think that you can add grad school to a life that has already got you working 12 hours a day, you got to give your head a shake because it's not going to happen. Something has to be set aside. Procrastination, we all procrastinate. We all do it. You have to figure out what's causing you to procrastinate, what's making you sit idle despite the fact that you've got tons of stuff to do. So like, is procrastination a bad habit? I'm seeing some stuff in the chat. I'm going to get to it. 
disorganization, this, there will be different levels for different people. Some people don't mind being disorganized. Other people can't handle it. I'm one of those people that I really like to be organized. I actually rewrite my notes. I take messy notes and then I rewrite them. So I really like to be organized. Some people will have different perspectives on this, but if, if you have a problem with disorganization, if, if disorganization is a problem, I should say it differently for you, then take the time to get organized. And then never saying no. If you're just a, yep, I'll do it. Yep, I'll do it. Yep, I'll do it. You'll never get anything done. You'll, you're, you'll never control your time because you're too busy taking on too many projects. Okay, so Andre apparently said something brilliant here. So let's see what Andre said. I keep my email closed while working on tasks for which I have blocked off time and email gets its own block of time. Absolutely that. The, the tyranny of email has been a huge problem. As I said earlier, technology was supposed to help us. And it's actually made things so, so much worse. But the, the big thing um, for, um, and as somebody else said, a coworker of mine has four times a day that he checks and responds to emails. That's great. As long as you're not working for an organization that where you, you're somehow viewed as a better worker if you're responding to email like this, right? So some of this has to become within an, embedded within an organization's culture to allow this to happen. We don't all have the ability to say, I'm not gonna respond to email during this time. So let's see, dealing with the problems. Of course, we're running out of time here, which I think is hilarious. Which problems do you struggle with? And I think I've given you the option of doing your top three. What are your top three? So tyranny of the urgent, busy is a badge of honor, no white space. Do you procrastinate? Are you disorganized? Or are you struggling to say no? So what's happening in the chat? A world without email. Yeah, that's an absolutely fantastic book, um, Andre. Thanks for that link. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, this whole communication technology has not, has actually made all of this quite a bit worse. We've talked about that. We have lots of procrastinators in the crowd. Yeah. Um, I sometimes think that we procrastinate when we're overwhelmed, right? We're procrastinating. We can't get started because we have so much to do. We can't figure out what to do first. And so you just kind of are paralyzed in place. That can happen for procrastinators, and, and that can be why we're procrastinating. That takes us back to some of our very early conversations around priorities and knowing what's most important yeah airplane mode is a gift i agree okay so lots of people procrastinating so just think about that and and think about you know why have some reflection why are you procrastinating how might you get past it is it because stress is a big factor in procrastination and then where is the stress coming from sarah so you know if you, if you follow the link and follow to the end what's the stress coming from yes we live in a very stressful society yes things are happening that are very very stressful right now but can we learn how to manage those things can we take the time to be more mindful to meditate to try to deal with our stresses those sorts of things Okay, just as we uh, just as we close out, I hope we, we moved through a lot all of that really, really quickly. You remember that you get to decide where your time goes. And I get it's not as easy as that because there's lots of demands that are made. So you can either spend it moving forward or you can spend it fighting fires. You decide. This is the key for this quote. If you don't decide, others will decide for you. That's really important. So if you can't figure out how to manage your time, then you'll you'll find that other people are consuming that. They're sending meeting requests. They're sending emails. They're asking you to do things. And if you have an inability to say no, then it just makes it so, so much worse. Um, so somebody saying, oh, I hope it was helpful. My time to attend this meeting. So, hey, I guess that's the first step in getting organized. Absolutely. So. Um, we have a whole slew of resources on the Student Success Center. So there's a little beginner's guide to time management video. There is, if you can see on the screen, the Pomodoro technique, that's the one that helps you figure out time. Um, there's a paperclip strategy, self-assigned deadlines, don't break the chain. There's a million things that will help you manage your time and your tasks, and there's a ton of them on the Student Success Center under this section, Tips for Success, I really encourage you to have a look. We This video will be available, I don't know how long it takes, 24 hours or something. We're live streaming on YouTube, so you'll be able to watch it um, over, over and over and over again if you want. 
Um, if you're interested in any of the references that I used, any of the articles that I referenced, please don't hesitate to ask. There is my email. I am, if you are one of um, our 11,000 or so students, I am your Dean of Student Success, and me and my team are here to help you with all of this stuff, as are your instructors, your program advisors. We all are committed to helping you be really successful, and managing your time and your tasks is a critical, critical part of that. If there is anything I can do for you, please don't hesitate to contact me. If you are interested in an export of Menti, which will show you the results, for those of you that were participating on our um, on our mentee call, then don't hesitate to send me an email because I can export the PowerPoint. It will save um, it will save to a PDF file, and I will um, share that. We have a couple of questions that I'm going to get to. Somebody's addicted to Candy Crush. How to stop? Get it off your phone. Delete it from all of your devices. That's the best thing that you can do. Just get it all off. Get it all off, um, all of that kind of stuff. Um, so what advice do I have for mental clutter, having a hard time to focus? If you've got a busy brain, you really need to take the time and I would really encourage you to do some mindfulness activities. On that Student Success Center, we do have a podcast. Um, it's a mindfulness podcast. Take that time um, to, to Shelly, to, to really kind of, figuring out, um, give yourself permission to have, to, to sit with yourself and have that pause. Um, and also there is, there's lots of activities that I can share with you around prioritizing and setting goals and figuring out what's important. And sometimes when you can figure out what's important, you give yourself permission to set other stuff down, set it aside no longer do it because often it's those tasks that are kind of buzzing in your brain that you don't really need to do, but somehow you won't let them go. Um, so I hope that that's helpful, Shelly. Um, let me know and don't hesitate to reach out. Um, Success.yorkfullu.ca. If you don't know about the Student Success Center, I would really, really encourage you to check it out. There's a ton of resources. There's access to so many things around mental health, tips for your success as students access to um, accessibility features if you need them, how to access your allies, introductions to my team, career services is there, success.yorkvilleu.ca is your student success center. Um, so if you're looking for the mindfulness podcast, it's linked under the wellness page because it's all about wellness. I really encourage you to check that out. Um, I'm, trying to, I'm trying everybody to get to your chats and get to your questions. Um, I'm enrolled in MAD is a 40 hour work fe feasible while complete completing my study. Sabrina, I can't really answer that. It might be, um, but it depends on what else you're doing. Like if you're also coaching kids soccer and a single mom raising a couple of kids and all of that sort of stuff, I I'd suggest that you might have to set some of those things aside, right? Because you, the big thing is that if you're trying to attend to these at one o'clock in the morning and you're supposed to be sleeping, then it's not realistic. Um, but it is absolutely realistic. I did all of my graduate work, two master's degrees and a PhD raising a family. So you, it is absolutely possible, but you got to figure out what can you give yourself permission to let go of for now. It's not forever. It's for now. Yes, the Success Center is the same across all campuses. It's all students, all brands. It's York Bay University. It's Toronto Film School. It's all of you. Okay. So, um, you have my email, it's on the screen. If you need anything, please don't hesitate to contact uh, me, my team, more than happy to continue our conversations, more than happy to give you the export from Menti. If you'd like to see the results that we had um, from our session today, and there might be pages of them, I will warn you. Um, yeah, I agree, Andre, the pandemic has helped with letting go of lots of stuff. We've kind of really figured out what's important and, and what isn't. So um, I haven't managed to get to all your questions, but it is three minutes after the hour and I can't end a time management session really, really late because it's not being very respectful of your time. I really appreciate you spending this hour with me today. I'm glad that to see that, I, that you found it helpful and um, don't hesitate to connect. In the meantime, enjoy the rest of your afternoon, enjoy the rest of your evening and please be safe. 
be well and be kind to each other. It's a really difficult time right now. And so we all just have to remember we're not working at our best. We're just not. So we really have to be kind and be grateful um, for this time that we have to do all of these amazing things. So take care, everybody. I hope to see you at the next session. We'll talk.